Today we are here with Sarah Lightman, conducting an interview for the show Drawing from Life and Literature. How are you today, Sarah? I'm great, thank you. That's good to hear. Um, so, just let's jump in. How did you start making art? I think I've always loved drawing and mm -hmm. making, and I also always loved being in my own world. Nice. And I had a doll's house, and I was forever reimagining my own life as somebody else in the doll's house for a very long time. And I think art's always been a place where I can be left alone and just make a world, my world, exactly as I want it to be. Wow. So I've been doing it for a long time. That's amazing. So what are the main driving forces behind your art? I think they've always been autobiographical. They've always reflected where I am in my life right now or right then as it was. And also there's something about being incredibly honest in my work. And I can always tell if I've been a little bit dancing for someone else or playing to an audience as opposed to just making the art that comes from inside of me. It's like a need for me to make art. It's a sense that I have to have this thing. I have to say it, I have to make it. And when it's out there, it feels great. And I feel almost kind of like a relief that I did it. Wow, that's very cool. We have these beautiful drawings here. Um, is that your favorite medium to work in or do you prefer other mediums? I love working with pencil and charcoal as well, and they're both very forgiving. You can make a mistake, you can rub it out, and instead of that being a bad thing, it actually enhances the work and gives it a history. I like it because it reminds me that we spend our whole lives making mistakes and picking up and trying again. And so when one of my charcoal drawings has a kind of history to it and a whole series of um, eraser marks everywhere, I think, well, that's what it is to live as well. It sounds like it makes it very personal for you. How comfortable are you sharing your art with other people? Does it sometimes get hard because it is so personal? I definitely think as you get older, you care a little bit less about what everyone feels about what you do. I also feel I'm always kind of delighted and surprised when people relate to my work. Just earlier today, Anna and I were chatting, and in my graphic novel, The Book of Sarah, she really related to two drawings that I'd done about um, waiting for email responses. I wrote something like eating two bananas while I waited for my boyfriend to get back to me or eating a salad while I waited for a gallery to reject my work. And to imagine that something I did that was so personal of that exact moment in my life actually relates to someone 15 years later, it feels fabulous. Ah. So do you consider your portraits that's kind of a visual journal of your life and your other works as well? Absolutely, I really do. And even these portraits I made, which aren't even of me, in a way they reflect this sense of me. At that point in my life, I really wanted to know what it was like to be myself making my own decisions. And it also reminded me that everybody's a little bit on their own in life. And these models sitting surrounded by lots of other people, they were in their own world, on their own, as we all are somewhere. That's very nice. I know we've discussed the concept of individuating, um, so kind of finding yourself through studying other people and learning about their lives. Um, and so how have other people that you have sat for you to draw kind of influenced your life and your art and changed the way that you see the world? I find that when I paint these portraits, I have a sense of everybody's sadnesses and their disappointments and an intimation of the lives they may have lived. And that helps me understand that it's okay for me to have lived a life of my own with its own kind of greys and kind of murkiness. And I, I think that's a very reassuring experience for me.